Frion was born in the commune of Dieuze in 1863. The area of Dieuze is a commune in the northeastern part of France. His father was a locksmith and his mother was a dressmaker. The wife of a chemist, Madame Parisot, was a patron of the Frion family, who would hire the wife of Emile Frion's father to design custom clothing. The Parisot took an early interest in the young Friant and treated him maternally, as they were without children of their own. Monsieur Parisot, a man of considerable importance in the place as he was the deputy mayor, with the defeat of the Second French Empire at hand, as part of the then ongoing Franco Prussian War, Dieuze was no longer under state control. Intensely distressed by this, Monsieur Parisot intended to leave the commune for Nancy, but died shortly before having the chance. In 1871, Madame Parisot fled with young Emile to Nancy. His biological family would follow later. The Friant family were reunited and settled to the point where Emile would be able to concentrate on his schooling. Friant was gifted in drawing from the start, and while Madame Parisot preferred to see him become a chemist like her husband, his father would relent to have him attend formal schooling while obtaining private tutoring for his art interests. Under the guidance of Louis Theodore Devilly, director of a school in Nancy and a proponent of realism, Friant learned the rudiments of figure, still life, and landscape painting. Friant painted Le Petit Friant at the age of fifteen. It was exhibited in Nancy and quickly became the centre of public intrigue. The municipal council granted him permission to travel to Paris a year later. In Paris he attended the École des Beaux-Arts with Alexandre Cabanel. While the training was invaluable, he found the rowdy and noisy atelier too much for him, and returned to Nancy. There he would meet compatriot artist and future travelling companion Henry Royer, while both attended the fine art school in Nancy. Returning to Paris in 1882, Aimé Moreau, a friend of Friant, Bastien Lepage's acquaintance, with whom he also met, encouraged him to debut two of his works at the Salon, The Prodigal Son and Studio Interior. The following year, Friant took second place in the Prix de Rome and again presented work at the Salon. At his next two Salon presentations, spanning from 1883 to 1884, he won third-class and second-class honours respectively. He would form a lasting friendship with the actors Ernest and Benoit Coquelin. With the grant he received from the Salon of 1886, Friant travelled to and studied in the Netherlands, joined by artist Henry Royer. His portrait of the Coquelin's mother reflects the influence of that trip. Already successfully established with commissions for portraits, he entered the 1885 Prix de Rome, with his second Interieur d'Atelier, which won him a second medal and exempted his work from future approval by the submitting jury, which is an accomplished feat for an artist at the age of just twenty-two. At the Paris Salon of 1886, Friant continued to show portraiture along with other entries and won a scholarship from the French government which enabled him to travel. His first journey was to Holland, where he studied portrait miniatures and the Dutch masters. His second and more important trip was to Tunisia, where Friant became fascinated with a new world and the light from lands of ancient peoples. After his return to Paris, Emile Friant exhibited his 1887 Réunion des Canotiers de la Meurthe, Reunion of the Meurthe Boating Party, at the 1888 Paris Salon. This large work did not win any awards but was very popular, which encouraged Friant to paint another large work. His La Toussaint, or All Saints' Day, won the grand prize at the 1889 Paris Salon. In the same year, Friant was named a Chevalier of the Legion of Honour, and won a gold medal, and another travelling scholarship at the Universal Exposition in Paris. He also became part of the Société Nationale de Beaux-Arts, which organised their own annual salons on the Champ de Mar, which provided a wider audience and was controlled by their own group, which is often important for artists otherwise left to prejudice jurying. By the mid-1890s, Friant began introducing idealistic compositions into his work, maintaining his naturalistic and skillful representation of daily life, while attracting affluent clientele. Many of his later entries at the Salon were portraits commissioned by wealthy patrons. Friant found patronage with Americans who wanted to exhibit or commission him, and his Les Fiancailles, 
the engagements was chosen for the first carnegie annual exhibition held in 1896 in pittsburgh Friant attracted the attention of art dealer roland nodler and art collector henry clay frick who included Friant's work in his newly established frick museum in new york city his successes grew throughout the remainder of his career adding american patrons such as robert sterling clark and his wife with exquisite drawings of each now in the clark museum of art in williamstown massachusetts he continued to exhibit through the years at the salons in paris and nancy in 1906 friand was named professor of drawing at the ecole nationale des beaux-arts where he continued to teach the importance of the academic drawing process he was appointed a professor of painting at the ecole des beaux-arts in 1923 and was made a member of the institut de france a comprehensive retrospective of his work was published in 1930 by the art critic arsène alexandre but sadly at the age of 69 emile friand fell to his death in paris on the 9th of june in 1932 a touching drawing of friand by his friend henry royer is a commemoration of their long friendship the brilliant work of emile friand continues to inspire us today Emile Friant continues to thrill art lovers today with his inquisitive genius and curiosity to explore his ever wide range of compositional possibilities. Canvases that demonstrated a talent that worked diligently to uncover all the elements of pure picture making. So, finally, we hope you enjoyed this look at a rare genius in the naturalist tradition, who, along with his predecessor Bastien Lepage, was an early encourager of Friant from the beginning, and made an impact. The art of painting is an exacting one and an exciting one at the same time, and with that we look forward to more presentations of great painters and sculptors. Remember to subscribe and leave a like to help us out. So until next time, it's bye for now.